The bar chart in D3 is one of the easier charts to put together. So here we have a vertical bar chart, uh, the X axis showing uh, some kind of fruit uh, and the Y axis showing the count of those fruits. To put this together, I first create an array of fruits uh, with each object uh, having the name and the count. Uh, after creating the SVG element, I create scale X using d3.scale band. The domain uh, is uh, attained by uh, mapping through the fruits array and uh, grabbing hold of d.name. In this case, it's just an image and that's how we get these images on our X axis. Uh, then I create Y, y scale uh, by using d3.scale linear and the domain in this case is from zero to d3.max, uh, which is the max count of the fruits. We can even use d3.extent to grab hold of the domain. And the range in this case is the height of the SVG element. I use an interpolator, in this case d3.interpolate blues to get uh, different colors in the, in the bars. Uh, from there on, after creating the uh, x-axis and the y-axis, it's, uh, it's a vertical bar chart. The x-axis is at the bottom and the y-axis is uh, towards the left. Uh, I think the only thing that left to do is to create rectangles. Uh, the only tricky bit here in the bar chart is, that, uh, is the height attribute. In this case, the height attribute uh, is attained by subtracting the d dot count from uh, from zero. So we pass the d dot count to the scale y and uh, we subtract that from the scale y zero. The scale y zero will return us the length of the SVG element minus the margin. To really drive this point home, our d3 dot scale linear has a domain going from zero to max value, which in this case is 26. What that means is if we pass in zero to scale Y, we're going to get a range of 450 because that's how we define the range going from dim dot height, which is 500 in our SVG element minus dim dot margin, which is 50. So our range is going from 450 to 50. And if we pass in a value of 26 to scale Y, we're going to get 50. Now with that in mind, if we actually look how the bar chart height is calculated. So the X and Y position, the starting X and Y position of our bar chart is determined by the X, its X position, uh, which we get by passing D dot name, in this case, the image of the fruit, and the Y position where the bar chart actually starts is determined by passing the D dot count. So here, if we pass the value of zero, we get 450 pixels. So hence the yellow bar is quite long. It uh, actually overshoots the X axis. And if we only pass D dot count, uh, we have the starting X and Y position. The starting Y position is the actual value of that bar. And uh, as, uh, as I showed previously, the higher the value, the lower the pixel value return, because that's how we defined our range. So in this case, if we only pass D dot count, our bar is quite short in length. So hence we subtract D dot count from scale Y to get the actual value. And on the right side, you can see that bit in blue is actually removed and we get a perfect length bar. So once we've figured out how to create a vertical bar chart, we can as easily create a horizontal bar chart. So in this case, um, all I've done is change the scale X to be the D3.scale linear this time and the scale Y to be the scale band. Uh, rest of the logic remains quite similar. Obviously in this case, uh, the actual uh, challenges to basically calculate the width. So the way we figured out how to calculate the height in the vertical bar chart, in this case, we are concerned about calculating the width. The rest of it is pretty much the same. We can also add other elements to a bar chart. So here I've added some circles to the bar chart to show how healthy a particular fruit, it, fruit is. Um, so for that, I added another variable to our dummy data and then I just added some circles. Uh, the X and Y positions are determined kind of exactly how we determine the X and Y positions of the rectangle. In this case, I just moved it 20 pixels to the right so it doesn't overlap with the rectangle. Bar charts are a great way to show transitions. So here we have um, on the X, on the Y axis, we have different states. And on the X axis, we have the population in those states divided by age groups. So as we move between day age groups, we can see how uh, a particular state 
moves uh, from one place to the other so uh, in this case this particular state is at the top but as we move we can actually keep track of this state as it moves from one position to the other so by um, giving the states different colors and keeping those colors consistent throughout these transitions uh, we can actually get a really nice visual effect To create this transition, I first uh, added some more dummy data, which now includes age groups, states, and the population. I then, uh, in the same way we created the bar chart before, I create different axes. At this time, rather than appending a rectangle straight onto the SVG, I actually use a dot join method to create the rectangles. I also have a draw function, uh, which calls in this update function and also updates the scale X and scale Y. And then from there, I just added some click listeners to the buttons. And each time a button is clicked, we call on that draw function by and pass it, pass it the data by sorting it beforehand. That's why the bar chart is actually sorted in a descending order. Rather than calling a bar chart through button click listeners, we can also hook it to an API uh, where the data is getting automatically updated. Uh, so the bar chart can just transition by itself. So here what I've done is I've just got a set interval method and I'm just calling the draw method from the set interval. So rather than calling it from a click listener event, I'm just calling it from the set interval, but you can also do it through an API which updates the data regularly. We can also have a bar chart uh, work in sync with other charts on the dashboard. So here I have a list of countries and as an example um, let's say the number of trees planted by that country and whichever countries come country comes first we also show the states within that country in a pie chart uh, for that what we're doing is we're grabbing hold of the country that comes first and then we are passing in the color of that a bar to the pie chart and the pie chart renders accordingly. The white flash that you see is basically the slices as they're getting removed. So that's the dot exit method uh, within the join function and just more for visual to see which slices in a pie chart get removed and which other slices are getting added. Uh, also in this case in the pie chart, we are not only using an enter function, we are also using an update function to basically uh, update the name of the states and update the slices and the color of the slices. The code to create the sync dashboard is also quite straightforward. So here I first create a separate function to create the pie chart. This function has an update method that creates the slices of the pie chart and also creates the labels for those slices. So once I've created the pie chart function, I then call this function within the update method of the rectangles. So I've got a set timeout method. Every two seconds, the pie chart function is called. The first time I create the bar charts, I also push the uh, mapping of the colors to the states. In this case, the state is actually the country. Uh, I, I push that mapping into a color tracker array. So that's how I know which country has been assigned which particular color in the bar chart. And uh, during the in the set interval method, whereas initially we were only calling the draw method, this time I'm also figuring out which is the country that has come on come first, and then I'm grabbing the color of the bar chart for that country and assigning it to the current pie color variable, which is a variable as I'll show here that determines the color of the pie chart and hence the pie chart changes the color each time we have a new winner.